Five years ago, I was 25 years old. And on my birthday, I said, Catherine, my sister, Catherine, you know it'd be the best birthday present in the world? And she asked, well, what, what, what can I do? And I said, well, you know my favorite movie is Castaway. It would be really cool if we sat down together and as a gift to me, we watched it together. And she said, Scott, I saw that movie when I was a little kid when it came out in the year 2000 and I've been traumatized. It's such, a, it's such an intense movie. It's so emotional. The plane crash, the alone time on the island, coming back to society, seeing that the one you loved is with someone else. And she said, I'll tell you what, Scott. I'll, I'll watch it with you on your 30th birthday. We'll make it a special night. And guess what? We did it last night. I'm 30 years old. My birthday was August 26th. And we did it last night. We watched Cast Away together in the theater room in her condo. And she bought me Wilson. This is an actual volleyball. It says Cast Away right here. And there is Wilson. Now the video is what's helped me the most with depression. But I want to talk about this movie for a second. And it, and it perfectly correlates to what I want to talk about and what's helped me so much. And usually on this channel, I like... I'm so uh, used to inviting you to do something. I, 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 I want to share my experiences and, and invite you to do something. And I really want to focus on me in this video. And if you saw in the community section, if you're subscribed, I said I'd be making more personal videos on this channel. So um, allow me to be a little personal and just share my thoughts and open up my brain and, and barf all over you. And if you like, if you like what I say, well, ponder a little bit after the video and, and think how maybe you can alter your lifestyle and life to maybe uh, align more with the the kind of life that you want. So we watched Castaway last night, and the soundtrack, the cinematography, the silence, it's in on the island. Everything about that movie is so beautiful. The acting, of course. And why did Tom Hanks, why did Chuck survive on the island for four long years? Because he wanted to see Kelly once again. That was his drive. That was his motivation. He wanted to see Kelly, the love of his life. That's what pushed him forward. He could care less about himself. If no one was waiting for him at home, if no one was there for him, well, what's really the point of living? You know, it made me realize that the biggest drive for us and, and the drive for change and, and why we get up in the morning is because we need to be needed. We need to belong. We have psychological needs and one of them is we need to be part of something bigger than ourselves. That's what motivates us. That's what drives us. That's what helps us survive. Chuck survived four years on the island and came back, came back to Memphis to see Kelly. It was his drive through the whole movie. Four years in isolation. And isolation would have killed him too. But Chuck, of course, you need to create a friend. You can't live in isolation. You need someone to talk to. You need someone to give you feedback. You need someone to be there with you. So what's helped me most with depression, and I'll explain this because it's, it's a really awkward thing to talk about. Um, and I don't like the answer one bit, and I, I didn't like when I discovered this answer, is I needed friends. And it hurt me when I realized that. It actually did. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It really hurt me because I love being alone. I love my alone time. You know, we, I, I was on a live stream today with the patrons. And if, you know, you're, if you're interested in that, the link's all below. You can join our online community. We do live streams together, giveaways, voting, music, 
talking, I love the community that we've built. And we talk about mental health, of course. And we had a live stream this morning. And I, and I said, you know, I love being alone. If I'm social all day, I love coming home. I swear I need to turn off the lights, hide in a corner, and just chill for a little bit. I like to play a video game, be on my own, self-reflect, meditate, just sit in silence. I need that. But just importantly, just as important, I need people. I need to be needed. It's hard to get up in the morning when no one's depending on you. Imagine getting up in the morning and no one cares if you're alive or dead. For some, that's a reality, and that fuels depression. So the reason that it hurt me to figure this out is, yes, I like being alone. I love my alone time. I love being isolated sometimes to recharge. So when dealing with depression, I tried everything. I take antidepressants, and, and before that, I tried everything, supplements, alter my diet, exercise, B vitamins, omega-3, St. John's wort, anything you can think of. I was trying it to avoid pharmaceuticals, and when I took antidepressants, I was able to tread water, but I kept avoiding this awkward question of, Scott, I think you need more friends. It's even awkward to say. It's hard to admit to yourself if you're someone with no friends. It's so common for millennials to have literally zero friends, no one to call on. No one that really needs you. What are you doing on a Saturday night? Is someone calling you? And the reason that you know that you're needed is, is you finally have the privilege of saying no to things. It's kind of a good feeling. It's finally, no, I have so much going on, I, I gotta say no. But you know, it, it was hard for me to admit that, you know, I've done everything in my power to get better, but the one thing I haven't changed is my social situation. It hurts to realize, but let me tell you what, hap what helped me the most with depression now, very recently, what, ha what helped me the most is finding a group to belong to. Finding some, some group that, where we share the same interests, where I have friends that share the, the marvel I have of the universe and we talk about space and we talk about comedy and we talk about politics and we and we exercise together and we play sports together and 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 work together it's a really good feeling to know that you're part of something bigger than yourself and what i found is i was constantly doing things for me to make myself feel better and you can probably relate right because we're told it's my mental health so i better do stuff for myself by myself i'll do my gratitude journal alone which i still do Gratitude journal alone. I'll make healthy meals, but I'll do it alone. I'll meditate, but that's alone too. And I'll exercise, but I'm doing that alone too. And I'll get a good night's rest, but that's alone too. And I'll go for walks because I need the exercise and I want to go through nature, but I'm doing that alone too. But I should read more self-help books, but I'm doing that alone too. We're doing everything for ourselves. You know what helped me? Is that taking that attention away from myself. Saying, no, I'm not the center of the universe and I shouldn't be. And realizing that I'm not and that I live for others and others live for me, it takes the pressure off, it takes the anxiety away, takes the stress away, and it brings joy into my life. Chuck wasn't living for himself. He was living for Wilson. Like, as cringy as that sounds, he was living for Kelly to go back to Memphis to see her. You live for other people. We live for each other. I live for you. I live for you. I, I, I'm doing this YouTube thing for you and for me. It helps me and I hope it helps you. Think of every, ev everything everyone's doing. You know, on that live stream, I was talking about, uh, we were all talking about, you know, this obsession we have for stuff and things, okay? So you could, you could argue that, okay, why do you want a good paying job? Well, I want a good paying job so I can eat and I can have shelter, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, 
you keep working. Why are you working longer hours? Okay, so why do you want a different job? Okay, so I can make more money. Why do you want more money? Okay, so I can get a bigger house and I can have more stuff, bigger TV. I want the new Nintendo Switch. I want a new pair of skis. I want a new bike. I want a new coffee maker. I heard these new coffee makers uh, make coffee with the iPhone app and then you can go to Google Home and it controls all your lights. And then I heard there's this, there's this app where you can call people and they paint your whole house and you can have a different color every week. <laughs> I realized that the end goal for me for working longer, for working harder, for doing more, ended up being, I just wanted more stuff. I just wanted more things, I wanted more objects. What helped my depression too, is having that focus on people. Take the focus away from things. Focus on people. Okay, what can I do to connect more with people? What can I, what else can I do for my friends? How can I make other people feel a bit better and more welcome and, and, and help them belong to communities? How can I help you, anyone who's watching, how can I help you with mental health? You know, I, I offered people joining that online community for free. I wanna help you, and in turn, I'm helping myself. If you wanna help yourself, help others. This is a well-studied and well-known thing to help mental health, we know that that materialism, we know that this hedonic adaptation where you get a new thing and then your happiness level drops to where it used to be. We're a very individualistic culture now because we're out to get ours and we want to succeed and we want to do things for us. We want more to show off and impress to other people. The truth is we're all in this together. We're all in this together. And what you do for you should in some way affect someone else and it will make you feel better. So in my experience, when I started making friends and I, and I started this online community and I'm getting closer with people online and developing connection that way, and I joined sports teams, and I play ultimate frisbee and I played basketball, I played volleyball, and I'm going to different events in the city and having just movie nights with people. Even if you sit beside someone in the same space, it can be the most beautiful thing just to be with other people and sharing a moment together. Like, I believe so much in my heart and in my experience that, that being closer with other people in real life has helped me so much. That's all I want for other people now to experience that joy and connection. Now, I know what you're maybe thinking. Scott, I'm dealing with social anxiety at the moment. Scott, I'm too anxious to talk to people. Small talk is difficult for me. I don't even know what to say to anyone. Why would anyone be my friend? I'm boring. And I know those thoughts are true to some people and it makes me sad to hear that because the truth really is you have something to offer to the world and to other people that no one else can. You think you're unworthy of love? You think you're unworthy of attention and admiration? You think you're unworthy of friendship? Nothing could be further removed from the truth. You should have everything I have times a million. You should be able to accept a phone call from a friend and they ask you to do something and you say yes. Or you say, no, I'm hanging out with other friends, but do you want to come to this thing that I'm going to? It's a really good feeling. So to answer the, you know, to think about social anxiety, I'm not saying you have to go out right now and get a million friends. I'm not saying you have to go out at all and get a friend. I'm saying, let's ponder this for a second. I want you to imagine something with me, okay? Let's all close our eyes. Let's all close our eyes. I know you didn't close your eyes. You're still looking at me. Come on, close your eyes. Really, close your eyes. Nope, they're still open. Come on, close them. Okay. Like, think of something that you've wanted to do, but you didn't want to do alone. Really, is it going to uh, the mall? Did you want to go to this concert? Did you want to just walk around your city and check some things out? Did you want to go to an art museum? Do you want to just go for a drive and go to a new part of town? Well, imagine that you had one or two other people that you could do that with. And no, there, don't think of the people that you're with who are, are judging you or insulting you or they're bullying you or they're not happy to be there. No, 
Imagine two people with you that are really happy to be there with you, that are laughing with you, that are maybe sad with you, that are observing the moment with you. Imagine that you know and have the freedom that whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're going through, whatever you're witnessing, you can share openly with them and they will fully accept you for you. And now imagine they're going through something and they tell you about it. Do you feel important? Do you feel needed? Because they're opening up to you and they want to tell you something that's important to them. Doesn't it feel good to be needed? Doesn't it feel good to belong? It does feel good, doesn't it? If you're dealing with depression or anxiety, know that's not forever and know that if that brought you joy, that, that thought, that can become a reality for you. I'm serious, that can become a reality. You are needed in this world. People need you in this world. You will find friendship. That is what helped me tremendously on my journey dealing with depression. Connection. In-person relationships. Online closer relationships being needed, me needing others and others needing me. I wish you all the best, my friends. Stay strong, keep being you, and express yourself. Take care.